Welcome back, Better Agents. Nicholas Harris coming to you live from Better Agency HQ. And in today's video, we have one of those controversial topics where we're going to be asking the question, will insurance agents be around in the year 2032? Now, of course, I have some very strong opinions on this topic, but to illustrate the point, I wanted to tell a little bit of a story and welcome you to the future of insurance as told by our lead character in the story, Jim. Jim is an agency customer in the year 2032. His digital personal assistant orders him a vehicle with self-driving capabilities for a lunch meeting across town. Upon hopping into the arriving car, Jim decides he wants to drive today and moves the car into active mode. Jim's personal assistant maps out a potential route and shares it with his mobility insurer, which immediately responds with an alternate route that has a much lower likelihood of accidents and auto damage, as well as a calculated adjustment to his monthly premium. Jim's assistant notifies him that his mobility insurer's premium will increase by 3-6% to based on the route that he selects and the volume and distribution of other active mode cars on the road. It alerts his life insurance policy which is now priced on a pay as you live basis and it will increase by 2% for this quarter. The additional amounts are automatically debited from his bank crypto account. When Jim pulls into his destination's parking lot, his car bumps into one of the several parking signs. As soon as the car stops moving, its internal diagnostics determine the extent of the damage. His personal assistant instructs him to use his wearable glasses that are connected to his carrier much like a traditional mobile app and has a camera built into the lens to take three pictures of the front right bumper area and two of the surrounding area. By the time Jim gets back to the driver's seat, the screen on the dash informs him of the damage, confirms the claim has been approved, and reports that a mobile response drone has been dispatched to the lot for inspection. If the vehicle is drivable, it may be directed to the nearest in-network garage for repair after a replacement vehicle arrives. Now before you dismiss the story as too far-fetched and something out of a movie, you should know that a lot of the technology talked about in this illustration, it either already exists and it's available for purchase by consumers today, or it's already in development and it will exist soon. So I don't think that this story is too far out of left field to where it couldn't happen in the next 10 years. I think it's also safe to assume that the way insurance is bought, sold, and maintained is also going to look very different in the next 10 years. And here in this video, I want to give you my thoughts and opinions of what I think the future holds for both carriers and agents. And what I think agents should start doing today to prepare themselves and their agencies if they're not just going to only survive, but if they're going to thrive in this new era of insurance in the next decade. Let's first talk about the future of carriers. I think the number one change that's going to happen over the next decade is underwriting is going to become a lot faster and a lot easier for carriers. With everything that's connected, all the wearables, all the new devices that maintain your data both on the internet, off the internet, all the things that you have from bracelets, watches, shoes, clothes, dryers, refrigerators, computers, phones, everything, and everything that's going to come into the market in the next decade, it's going to have a lot of your data, a lot more data than you could ever answer on forms or that it would take time to put on applications or court forms or all the things that we're used to today. I think that connected data is going to be something that carriers have easy access to because you're going to give them permission to do it and it's going to be able to give you better underwriting results, more practical pricing, faster underwriting. I think carriers are going to have all this data at their disposal. So the good carriers, the carriers that are going to thrive in the next decade and it's going to allow them to serve their customers and people with better products and more reliable products. It's the old adage that Big Brother is always watching you. I'm not here to say that's a good thing or that's a bad thing. I think that's just the reality is that carriers are going to have their hands on so much personal information from consumers and customers that it's going to make this whole underwriting process a lot different in the next decade. I think the second thing you're going to see with carriers in the next 10 years is it's going to be out with the old, in with the new. I think a lot of the legacy carriers that have been around for 100 plus years, they have skyscrapers in all the major buildings, I still think they'll be around. I think their product offering will look a lot different. And you already start to see this now when carriers are focusing much more on financial services than they are on insurance. I think it's going to be a lot of new carriers, new blood coming into the market, carriers that are swifter, more agile, they have great funding behind them, and they're going to be able to 
to move faster with this data. They're going to be able to find the holes and the gaps that these legacy carriers have left behind, and they're going to come in. And you already see this now with carriers like Openly, like Slide, Hippo, all these Branch, all these carriers. Now. And there's going to be a lot more in the next decade. You're going to see these insure tech carriers that are agent friendly, that are consumer friendly. They're going to come in with this big data, with this simplified way of doing business, and they're going to serve in the marketplace. And they're probably going to displace a lot of these legacy carriers just on the fact that they're able to move faster. They're able to implement modern technology in a way that these big, massive carriers, they want to. It's not that they don't want to. It's that it's like steering the Titanic. You just can't get out of the way of the iceberg fast enough. That's what I think is going to happen. There's going to be an uh, influx of new insure tech carriers, new carriers. We're just going to call them carriers, not, not even insure tech, just new modern carriers that are leveraging data and a way of doing business that is a little bit more modern and flexible that carriers today just don't have. Now let's talk about what I think will be different for agents in the next decade. Spoiler alert, I do think agents will play a prominent role in insurance distribution in the next 10 years. I just think that their job will look completely different than it does today. I think appetites will be replaced by algorithms. I think the days of taking customers and making sure they fit with your carrier appetite is going to look a lot different. You're not going to have to rely on appetites from the carriers because carriers are going to be relying a lot more on algorithms. They're going to be relying a lot more on big data. AI from carriers is going to go from the infant stage that it is today, and it's going to be in full-blown adolescence. It's going to be a lot different, a lot more mature, a lot better than it is in a decade than it is right now. I think it's just foolish to think that it won't be. And so when you're looking at customers and where they fit, how it works, I think the data is going to tell you where this needs to go and how it fits and then give you much better projections on lifetime value, on claims, on underwriting. I think all of that is going to be a benefit to agents. I also think the conversations with customers will look a little bit different. Right now, the conversations mainly focus on risk prevention. I think in the future, it's going to go more towards the model of performance pricing, that if you do these certain things, your pricing is going to be a lot different. It's a pay as you go. It's a different way of thinking about underwriting. It's more based on performance and things that the customer will need to do to access data or to provide data or to change lifestyle. I think it's going to focus a little bit more on that. I think, again, the underwriting from the carrier is going to dictate how these conversations go. But I think we're going to go a lot more from, hey, let's prevent this risk to talk a little bit more on the consultative side of how do we make this perform better for you. I also think you're going to see more agencies hiring data analysts to their staff. Right now, a traditional agency consists of the principal, maybe a producer, a CSR, maybe somebody on staff for retention, or some other ancillary role. I think you're going to see more and more agencies having a data analyst on their team, somebody who can get the data, understands the data, knows how to help the principal, the producer, the CSRs start to profile customers a lot differently or understand the carrier underwriting a lot differently. You're going to need somebody on your team, and it's probably not going to be the principal who's going to have to be able to go into all this data and these algorithms to help the agency perform at a higher level, to give insights and feedback to everybody else on the staff on how they need to be doing their job better, more profitably. I think you're going to see data play a huge role. And data has been a buzzword in the insurance industry for the last few years. I understand that. But the way that it's been talked about, I don't think it's been talked about in this way that I think carriers are going to start leveraging data in a much different way. And as insurance agents, we're going to have to adjust. So now that you have my opinion, let me give you four things that I think insurance agents should start doing today to prepare for the next decade of changes. Number one, I think if you're an insurance agency owner, you need to get serious about acquiring more books of business. You need to be out there scouring. You need to be opening up your borders, look in other states, look for other types of agencies, find books of business that you can bring into your agency. I don't care if you've got to beg, borrow, or steal, if you've got to do strategic mergers, figure out a way to get more of those customers on your books because more data on your books I think is going to play huge in the coming years with carriers. It's going to be your leverage point. It's going to be how you perform better. You've got to get more. It's not just for the commission dollars. That's a byproduct. And I know there's all kinds of things with overhead, but you've got to get that data on your books because I think the more data you have, the better it's going to be when you're talking with carriers, when you're negotiating, when you're leveraging, when you're trying to figure out contingencies or bonus or how you're going to be profitable. So get very very serious, I mean drop dead serious about finding books of business, paying for them, making them get onto your 
books, you've got to start acquiring books of business today. The second thing you need to do is you need to start shedding these high loss clients. People with high frequency of claims, I don't care if they're your mother, your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, if you got people on the books and they're performing poorly, they're they're really messing up your loss ratio, you've got to get rid of them. You've got to figure out someplace else for them to go. You've got to get this stuff off the books because the name of the game is profitability. You've got to be profitable with the carriers. You've got to have good data. You've got to have data that's profitable. So if you've got anybody, you've got to go after just a super preferred book of business. So as you're acquiring books of business or as you're writing a business, when people have this frequency of claims and it's detrimental or it's having a strong impact on your performance, you got to get rid of them. You got to shed that stuff off the books. The third thing you need to do is you need to diversify your book. If you are heavy on either commercial lines or personal lines or life or whatever, you've got to get super diversified. You've got to have a good, healthy mix because I think that if there's going to be some sort of event that's going to really alter the way that you know insurance is distributed or that's going to be impactful to agents in a negative way, you better be super diversified. So I talk to a lot of personal lines agents and my best advice to them is to start learning commercial. Start getting people hiring, hire commercial producers start going after commercial business and don't go after the main street stuff don't go after the stuff that everybody else is going after go after the stuff that is hard so if you can get in ENS you can get into an area that requires a lot more skill I think that's a great way to sort of hedge yourself around, create some layer of protection for yourself. If you're on the personal line side, you better get into personal lines. You better start getting some auto and home on the books. You need to bring in much more balance to your portfolio. And the fourth thing that I would encourage every agency to do in the next 10 years is you need to figure out other lines of business that you can get into. Namely, I would figure out ways to get into financial services and mortgage or real estate. If you only do insurance, that's gonna be tough. And the reason is, it's not because I think you're gonna be out in the cold, I think really it comes down to, again, having more data, having more diversified data, having more stuff where it's on the insurance side, financial services side, on the mortgage and protection side, all of that stuff together, you're going to be able to leverage in a way that you're not leveraging right now. Not only is it good because you're bringing in other income streams, that's a natural byproduct, but really it's your defense. It's your kind of assets in your agency that's going to make it hard for carriers or for people as things start to consolidate a little bit more, things get a little bit tougher as people start to age out of the industry, it's going to be tougher for them to get rid of you. So make sure you diversify yourself, figure out ways in the next few years. It doesn't have to be today, but start putting the plans in motion today. Start thinking about it today where you can add other services. I would get into mortgage personally. I think it's great. I would figure out ways to get into that or into financial services, but there's all kinds of other things, income, identity theft, and all that stuff. There's all kinds of things that you can get into, but figure out a way to make that another sort of product product in your agency, again, just so that you can get that data, you can get your hands on that data and it makes you much more valuable in the future. Look, here's the honest reality. I'm talking all about what could happen in the next 10 years, but also there's a reality that nothing happens, that everything just stays the same. But I would make a bet. I would wager on this. If I had to say who's more right, is it more right that the industry is going to change and move more in the model that I'm talking about? Or is the industry going to be exactly what it is in the next 10 years? I think with everything that we're seeing in every other sector and every other industry, something's going to change. And I think it's going to move a lot closer, maybe not exact to what I'm talking about, but I think it's going to move a lot closer to what I'm talking about in 10 years than what it's going to be if you just stick around and do nothing. So prepare yourself right now. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and comment down below. Let me know what you think is going to happen to the industry in the next 10 years, where you see it going, where you see it heading, and what agents need to do. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'll see you again on the next video.